When could Nova Scotia become an island? The answer is complex. It's a question scientists are asking themselves. They're looking at this area, the Chignecto Isthmus. The narrow piece of land connects New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. It's vital to the movement of goods by truck and train. A number of communities are located here, the largest being Amherst. If Nova Scotia was to be cut off from the rest of Canada, this is where it would happen, caused by rising sea levels in an area known for the highest tides in the world. The following numbers relate to mean sea level, which is important to remember. Mean sea level measures about halfway between low and high tide on any given day. And those tides along the isthmus are very high, averaging about six meters, thanks to the Bay of Fundy. The highest tides in this area can reach seven meters during spring tide. Spring tide, also known as king tide, refers to the springing forth of the tide during new and full moon. If a storm came through causing a storm surge of one meter, water would overflow over several dikes that are just eight meters tall. Tide analysis for 2021 suggests this scenario could happen on April 30th, May 28th, October 10th, November 8th, and December 7th, dates when tides are predicted to be near seven meters. This is what that scenario could look like. See the water receding? Depending on the strength of the tide and surge, each pulse of the tide could push water further inland until the storm dissipates. Track and location of such a storm would also affect how long it would take for water to flood the isthmus. Millions in trade dollars pass through the isthmus every day, and the rail line and Trans-Canada Highway are key. They'd be hit by rising sea levels first, long before the water would cut off Nova Scotia from New Brunswick. At just seven meters, the water is already right up against the rail line. In the same scenario with a storm surge of about a meter, some data indicates not only the rail line, but a few kilometers of the highway could be flooded. So back to the original question, when could Nova Scotia become an island? According to this data, when the water rises to 12 meters, it all comes down to this area where water from the Bay of Fundy and the Northumberland Strait would meet. In 2021, that's high tide plus five meters, which is extreme and likely won't happen anytime soon. But in honor of the original question, let's bring sea level rise data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration into this example. It says that on the low end, sea levels will likely rise about one third of a meter by 2100. On the high end, it's two and a half meters. Add that high number to current high tides, Tides in 2100 would be about nine and a half meters high. Those would routinely overtop current dikes. It would then take a surge of two and a half meters or more in a storm scenario to cut Nova Scotia off from the rest of Canada. Some could argue that as storms intensify with climate change, such storm surge could be possible. In October of 1869, the Saxby Gale struck the Bay of Fundy. The tropical cyclone was the worst on record. It caused major flooding across the Maritimes. Dikes were overwhelmed. Taking sea levels, surge, and other variables into account, water levels would rise to nine meters if the Saxby Gale were to happen today, just three meters short of Nova Scotia becoming an island. <laughs>